Thank you very much. Now, I'm going to be spending most of the talk with my eyes down at my laptop screen because I'm going to be typing furiously and probably very badly. Um, please shout at me if you have questions, heckling, uh, bug reports. Bug reports be particularly useful. Um, and we'll see how we go. So the background for this talk was a lightning talk that I gave at last year's um, open programming mini conf called MicroPHP. It would have helped if I'd had the right thing up. OK. So basically, the point of this talk was to look at the state of the micro framework um, ecosystem in PHP, particularly related, particularly relative to things like Python, where you actually have micro frameworks that are micro. Um, so you've got these micro frameworks. They're pretty cool. Basically, the punchline was that they're all massive. Um, Silex is 33,000 lines of code, or it was 12 months ago. Slim is 6,000 lines of code. Flight is 812. So basically, my point was that you can actually use PHP itself as a micro framework, because the amount of actual glue that these, a lot of these micro frameworks provide is surprisingly small. After that, I decided that after drinking considerably, perhaps the best way to demonstrate that would be to just do it in a 20-minute talk. So here I am. Um, Harlan Ellison has, the, has this thing where he goes into a bookstore, a book signing, and he will write the first 20-odd pages of a novel. He'll just take a typewriter in and he'll type stuff, and as he finishes a page, it gets stuck to the wall and he can't go back and edit it. I can go back and edit it because I'm nowhere near a good, as good a programmer as Harlan Ellison is a writer. But I'm going to basically try and do more or less the same trick. I'm going to write stuff in front of you right now, and hopefully we will end up coalescing into some sort of micro framework that is functionally not very dissimilar to the micro frameworks that I mentioned before. I'm also just setting up a stopwatch. Now, just to prove that I'm not actually cheating on this and using code from elsewhere, I'm going to pick a random person in the front row. You there. What's your name? Jeremy. You are indeed, apparently, Jeremy. Is there any code on that, uh, on that set of notes? No. Excellent. Thank you very much, Jeremy. Your check is in the mail. <laughs> right, let's get going. So what does a micro framework really entail? Um, I've broken it down to about six things, and we'll see how many we actually get through. I would say that it involves some sort of service container, because service-oriented architectures are a good thing. I would say it involves some sort of front controller routing component, um, some sort of database access component, um, maybe some sort of user basic user management, at least to the point of not having your passwords in single DES with password hints next to them in the table. Thanks, Adobe. Some sort of templating system. Spoiler, there may already be a templating system available. And some sort of testing. So let's see how far we can get into this. I have conveniently created this empty directory here. Let's create some sort of container directory for our library components. Components, that's how you know I'm professional. And let's see what we can do. Let's start with some sort of basic service container. Now, a service container really, of course, is just a way of making singletons not look like singletons so that you don't get made fun of at the pub. So, a service container actually turned out to be a surprisingly... <laughs> Here we go. A service container turned out to be a surprisingly easy thing to write. You can, in fact, do it in less than a screen's worth of code. So we need some sort of cache and we need some sort of way of having service definitions. We want to add a service by name. We, it has some sort of way of constructing the service. Incidentally, spelling mistakes, I'm really not entering into at this point. Um, there should really be... <laughs> there should really be some sort of error checking on this to prevent double definition of services, but, you know, I've got like 12 minutes to write this, so whatever. Um, we will get it. So basically, we check, I mean, it's very simple. We just check if we've already instantiated the service, which we would do by checking the cache, I guess. If we have, we return that instance. Otherwise, we check if, you know, we actually have a service defined with that name. Now, the trick is to allow for dependency injection, the easiest way to do this is basically to pass the service container into the constructor. It's not great practice. It'd be better to actually list out the dependencies explicitly. But the point of a micro framework is that it does nothing. So let's see what we can do. <laughs> Services name. 
Now, of course, PHP has this, uh, because the PHP parser sucks, I can't just go call this service's name foo. I actually have to do something a little bit. I actually have to assign it to a temporary variable first, which is kind of annoying. But we can call constructor with this. And we set the cache, and we now have done it. And let's just throw some sort of exception if it doesn't. Service name not found. You suck. OK. That will probably be aimed at me shortly when I typo a service name. So we have a service container. Done. Next component, we need some sort of router. Now, a router is also a pretty simple thing, really. It's you basically have a set of routes and you attempt to match them against the request that you've got. So, how would you define a route? It is effectively the combination of the HTTP method, the, the request URI, which we're going to define as a regular expression because usability is for suckers, and some sort of callable that actually does something. Okay, so this is a one-liner. We basically just add an array because everything in PHP is ultimately an array. It's really an array-oriented language. And then we need some sort of way of matching what's in this array. So, obviously, we iterate over the routes. Now, this, of course, means that the more specific routes need to go first. Some would call this a bug, I would call it a feature, and I'm not planning to document it because, you know, time. So, we, I'm going I'm to I'm use PHP 5.5, which means I can basically unpack these routes as I go. There is obviously a name conflict there, so route method, pattern, controller. If route method equals, equals method, uh, See, don't you just love how terse and expressive PHP is right about now? It's just brilliant. Now, assuming we match this, then we also have some matches. Now, the regular expression might have sub-patterns which might be relevant, such as, say, the ID of the blog post that needs to be loaded or something like that. So we need to pass them into the, into the controller. So what we'll do is we'll effectively curry the controller and return a callable that doesn't require a parameter. So, return function, we need to pull things in from the current scope, which will be controller and matches, because, you know, explicit is better than implicit, or so I'm told. Return controller matches. Right. Anyone see any bugs? You're not evaluating anything in global scope. I thought that was necessary. <laughs> I haven't even used a super global. There is actually a bug there, I've just realized, so. You want to fix it? I'm hoping that somebody will spot oh, it. All right, I missed a semicolon. I always miss that semicolon. <laughs> so, that's a router. Um, what else have we got? So we need some sort of way of doing database access. Now, PDO handles quite a lot of this for us. Um, for example, there's a fetch mode in PDO that you can basically use to instantiate an object with the property set to whatever the, rec the fields in the record are. The nice thing about that but it basically is that, therefore, what we really need to do is just implement some sort of really basic active record trait to handle saving and deleting. Now, obviously, active record has its detractors. Some people like it, some people don't. But when I'm under time pressure, I just like to use anti-patterns everywhere. So <laughs> let's see how we go. We'll do it as a trait rather than as a parent class because it's not actually, from an object point of view, it doesn't actually make sense for it to be a base class. It was just the way people did it before PHP 5.4 because PHP doesn't have a way of doing multiple inheritance or mix-ins aside from traits, which we knew in 5.4. So we need to inject a database object somehow, which will basically be an implementation detail for whatever code actually has to instantiate this. We need some way of getting the table name, which I'm simply going to implement as an abstract function. So the, the class that uses the trait actually has to define that. We will need some way of getting all of the fields, but we can probably have that as a default by just introspecting the object. So let's see what we can do with that. Uh, that will be array filter, because we want to get rid of the database object. Array keys get object bars. This so expressive. Um, function 
field. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Look how easy that was. Um, so that, anyway, that gives us some way of getting the fields. At that point, we basically just need to implement delete and save methods. Delete is obviously pretty easy. For the sake of this, I'm just going to say, you must have an ID property that maps to ID. Right. <laughs> the point is, I mean, I'm doing this in 20 minutes in all seriousness, and it's actually about 12 by the time you factor in questions and starting late and the introduction and the conclusion and so on. And, like, that's easily fixable. That's not very much more work to fix. So, I guess what I'm getting at is, for database things, for example, the, the first thing people do nowadays is reach for things like doctrine. And that's fine, doctrine has a perfectly good place, but there are times when it's honestly just more lightweight and simple to just use PDO for 80% of it and just put a little shim on top like this. Because, for example, the delete method is really not going to be much more than prepare delete from this get, get table. For some reason, the space key on this hates me, so there's going to be a lot of that. <laughs> Statement, ex execute this ID. This ID sh should be set to null, and really we should be checking if this ID is set beforehand. If not is null, this ID. Done. Okay. And then saving is basically going to be something fairly similar. We need to get the fields. We need to get the values from the fields on the object. Uh, we will prepare some sort of statement, which I'm, for the sake of argument, going to pretend that we're using a database system that supports something really lazy, so MySQL. Implode fields. So I've practiced this a couple of times. This is the bit I always get wrong every single time. So um, implode. Now, of course, we want to use placeholders rather than just, you know, Obviously, I, do I really need to explain why directly interpolating strings into queries is a bad thing? <laughs> are, are, we, are, we all okay? are we all okay with that? Can I, can I move on? <laughs> okay. Oh, this talk is PHP programming as well. <laughs> <laughs> Statement execute values. If we don't already have an ID, then we should grab it. This db last insert id, and we're done. Hopefully, how much of this? Probably don't want to save the db object to the database. Um, we shouldn't be, uh, because this get fields should filter okay. them out in theory. Okay. Hopefully. <laughs> Adam is a former co-worker, just, um, just to make that clearer. Let's see how we're going so far. Terrific, okay. I have four minutes left, so let's see, how, so let's see what else we can do. Um, we would need some sort of user management. So again, this is something I think where you would just have a trait that would probably be mixed in with the active record in practice, just to basically handle password hashing. Now, newer versions of PHP have a built-in password, well, PHP 5.5 has a built-in password API, which you should really use. There is a um, compatibility library for PHP 5.3.7 and later, which implements the same API. The good thing about this is that basically, in actual fact, there's another parameter to that, password default. The good thing about this is that it takes care of choosing a sensible password hashing function for you, so it'll use bcrypt by default. Um, the verify function will always do a constant time uh, string comparison, so you don't have to worry about um, timing, timing attacks, um, leaking timing information. And it's actually that simple, so that's, that's a bonus. And as I said, if you use that with the active record, then there's your, pass there's your password implementation right there. You just have to put a username or email address or whatever it is that you're putting, you're attaching to that alongside it. You also will probably want some sort of templating engine. 
Now, as I suggested, there may actually be a fairly easy way to do this. Now, PHP itself is remarkably a templating engine. So, all you really need to do here is have some sort of input file that should be included, and you can set up some context variables that should be passed to the template. You can then use a function that nobody ever actually uses called extract, which basically will take that array and will create variables in the local scope based on the keys of that array. It's usually a bad idea and usually a sign that you're doing something horribly wrong. It may still be a sign that we're doing something horribly wrong, but I'm doing it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and then we include the file. In actual fact, let's, let's make it a proper render. Let's not echo. Let's not have side effects. Let's actually grab it, return ob get clean. So now we just return a string, which is obviously the right thing to do. So the nice thing is that's a render, that is actually a fully functional templating engine in PHP. It just happens to use PHP as the implementation language. Now there's a philosophical argument here about whether templating engines should be full featured programming languages or not. Um, because the Django templating language has horrified me over the years, I say it should be, and Russell will be punching me later. So <laughs> that, that is a templating language. I'm now going to implement the very, very, I think the brilliant testing library that I, I use all over the place. It doesn't actually involve any PHP code. It involves writing a composer file to pull in PHP unit because who the hell wants to write a testing library? I mean, really. So that's how I would handle testing. So don't, re don't reinvent that wheel. There are, and I guess really, don't reinvent too many wheels. I've just spent 15 minutes reinventing wheels. And I'm doing it, I guess, to show that PHP has a lot of stuff built in. I mean, templating, database access, password handling are all you get lots of helpers out of PHP. Now, if you're doing a contact form, you don't need a framework. You probably don't even need a micro framework. You can really do it yourself in five minutes. If you're doing um, the latest Facebook alternative because a client with more money than sense has walked into your design agency and said, make me a Facebook clone, I've got this brilliant business idea, then sure, use a framework. That probably makes a lot more sense. But the point is to, to think of balance. Don't necessarily think of, I'm a WordPress developer, therefore I always use WordPress. Or I'm a Symfony developer, therefore I use Symf always use Symfony. Really, what you should be thinking of is trying to use the right tool for the job. It may not even be PHP. Could be Node, could be Python, could be Ruby. But if you do decide that PHP is the right tool for the job, then remember that PHP itself has lots of useful stuff. And sometimes it's quicker just to use what's in there. I am basically done. So are there questions, comments? I can bring up a demo that I wrote earlier that used basically this to implement a magic eight ball. Does anyone with opinions on framework design have any questions? <laughs> <laughs> Do security problems in your code count? Yes, totally. Uh, so you can pass a variable called file yep. in this context and just Yep. OK, so there's a certain amount of, um, this is one of those, okay, so this is one of those things where obviously a file is coming from a user supplied variable, you've got problems at this point. Um, it would obviously be better if there was some sanitization on this to at least make sure that there was some, you know, you weren't going back up and say going dot, 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 etc password is probably a, a, a good thing to do. Um, it's kind of, the problem is, I mean, regardless of your templating engine, at some point there's going to be a file name. Now obviously with PHP, your security the, the attack vector is much bigger. Um, and that's another good argument for using an actual templating DSL rather than. Would extract actually be able to extract a file of your um, in there as well? Yes, it would. So. So context is actually. No, technically, no. <laughs> you could actually get rid of the file. You are correct. <laughs> and, sim and simply call it with something like. <laughs> and on the bright side, your code is still only about as insecure as WordPress. <laughs> so yes, it's a good point. But if you're going to introduce security holes in your, in your program, you've got to do it properly. 
you've got to make them big ones. If you can't drive a truck through them, then you've done something wrong. <laughs> That's that, like a true PHP. Device. That is the PHP way. <laughs> Why use a framework? Because PHP gives you so much to start with. PHP mm. also gives you a hell of a lot of work for it to hang it. Yes. So the process of writing a really short one, you had to actively protect yourself against a whole bunch of yes. security problems that you need to know exist and know that you need to avoid and know this is the right way to avoid them. Indeed. People you should use work process around the floors. Sorry? Which is what the purpose of using a framework is. Yes, I mean, okay, so this talk is a little bit trolly. I'm the first to admit that. There, there's, there's kind of. I guess the point I'm really getting at here is not all frameworks are created equal. You know, you can pull in Symfony, which is 100,000 lines of code. I, yeah. You can pull in Silex, which is 33,000 lines of code. If there's a framework out there that's 812 lines of code that does actually what you want it to do, then you should probably use that. If you're literally just doing a please give us your contact details and we will send an email to someone thing, it, as long as you know what you're doing, which PHP, 50-50, um, <laughs> then maybe you don't need that at all. I, I agree. I mean, frameworks actually totally have their place, so I'm, I'm being a complete devil's advocate here. Um, but I guess I'm just trying to also illuminate some of the features that are also built in rather than, because user land code can be slow rather than necessarily going to use land for everything. Any more questions? Yeah, what's a trait? OK, <laughs> so a trait is... Effectively, a mix. It's, it's really a mix-in, in effect. Um, so it's something that looks sort of like a class. Um, so you can have pr properties and methods in it. And then you can basically use it. Um, so there's a, a use statement that you can place in another class. And what happens is all of the methods and properties that you defined in that trait basically are copied and pasted into the class that you wrote um, by the compiler. So it's effectively just a compiler, a compiler time control C, control V for, for your code. Your 2012 or 2013 talk would have? Yeah, I do have slides on this, I just don't have them in hand. Um, the manual, if you search for PHP trace, the manual page is actually fairly good. I think, the so it should cover that pretty well. Okay. Um, on that note, uh, let's thank Adam for his talk.